guys, Jessica here with the Pet Parenting Reset. And today we're talking about six reasons that your dog may be behaving badly. Lord. <laughs> so this is a really interesting topic for me because I feel like there are certain things that every household I go into or every person I talk to, I'm like, light bulb moment, right? Of course, as I'm talking to this person, I'm realizing this is happening, like the, there, or this isn't happening for their dog. And no wonder <laughs> that things are not going exactly the way this person is wanting them to go. So there are certainly things that I see over and over and over again <laughs> that can be leading to quote unquote bad behavior in our dogs, right? First and foremost is lack of exercise. This is over and above everything else. What I notice in almost every household is that your dog is not getting enough exercise, whether that's physical, mental, a lot of times both. Um, your dog needs exercise. Your dog needs enrichment. Your dog needs your dog needs more than sleeping on a couch all day, <laughs> right, while you're at work. Um, and a lot of times, you know, going out once, even twice a day on a 20, 15, 20 minute walk, that is just not gonna cut it for most dogs. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some dogs out there that definitely are going to be okay with a little bit more of a sedentary lifestyle. Getting out once or twice a day for a walk is, is going to be okay for them. But in general, most dogs are going to need a lot more than that. And every dog is different. No matter what we're talking about, every dog is different. So yeah, okay, there are some generalizations that we can make to all dogs. Like they need adequate exercise. They need species appropriate nutrition, they need environmental enrichment, they need love and safety and security and shelter. But <laughs> in how we provide these to our dogs can be different. The second reason could be genetics. And no, I do not mean the breed of the dog. I actually mean genetic traits. So traits that are passed down from one generation to another. It's been shown that a dog who gives birth to puppies, if she has a very stressful life, if she is very stressed out, maybe she is confined to a cage in a puppy mill, then her puppies will have a genetic predisposition to stress and anxiety. So there are some genetic traits that can be passed down from parent to puppy. That does not, of course, mean that you can't overcome any of these, but genetic predispositions to certain traits can exist. Okay, number three on the list is gonna be changes in environment. So anytime we change in our dog's environment, that is a stressor for them. So for example, when we moved, I knew that we're in a totally new place, so I'm going to need to reinforce any training that we've already given to our dog because dogs are not necessarily great at generalization. So what was true in our old home, she doesn't know that that's necessarily true in our new home unless we continue to reinforce that behavior and we work on it in the new environment. But as we think about, you know, stress and anxiety, presenting a new environment to our dog can be overwhelming and stressful in that way as well because, you know, there may be lots of new faces, new smells, all kinds of people around, different structures. There's lots going on in a new environment that can lead to not so great behavior in our dog because they, they're just uncertain. They're more than likely overwhelmed. Number four on the list is medical issues. So, more often than not, you're going to see, especially like in, in all of my videos, I'm going to first let you know that there could be an underlying medical issue and we need to make sure we're getting a veterinary checkup in the case of any new, unusual, maybe not so great behavior in our dog, right? Because that is a sign that there could be something physically going on with your dog. So if there's any sudden changes in mood or behavior with your dog, you absolutely want to check in with your veterinarian because there could be an underlying medical reason for it. And of course, if there is an underlying medical reason, if there's something going on medically with your dog, you wanna make sure you are addressing that and not just worrying about the behavior without taking into account that something could be actually wrong with your dog. Something could be 
uncomfortable. Something could be painful. Something they they know when they don't, I mean, when they don't feel good, they're going to let you know any way they can. So we always want to address any underlying medical issues with our dog before we ever start addressing anything behaviorally. And number five could be lack of socialization. So Dogs need socialization. And that doesn't mean that every dog should be going to the dog park. I actually have kind of a love-hate relationship with dog parks, but that's for another video. Socialization is very important for puppies, but it's actually important to continue throughout a dog's life. So if you adopt a dog who is already grown, like not a puppy, you don't know what their socialization experience was in life. Or even if you did have them as a puppy, it's important to continue socialization throughout their lives. So even if you have an adult dog, all hope is not lost. You can still help them to become less anxious around people, places, and things that would previously have brought them anxiety or stress. And the process of that is socialization. So all hope is not lost. Even if you have an adult dog, socialization is still possible, but a lack of socialization can certainly be the reason for quote unquote bad behaviors. <laughs> And number six is that your dog wasn't trained or wasn't trained well enough. So training is really interesting in that we, want, we train the behaviors we want to see in our dog. That's the bottom line. The behaviors we want to see in our dog is what we reward. The behaviors we don't want to see, we do not reward. We do not reinforce. So when we reinforce the behaviors we do want to see, that's called training. And training is interesting because it's not a one and done situation, right? You don't work with your dog for a little while, get a behavior down and then say, great, now my dog knows it's this. While yes, your dog does know that, <laughs> reinforcement throughout their lifetime is also really important. So even if you have trained a behavior in the past, continuing to reinforce it throughout their lifetime is still incredibly important to maintain that that behavior is still desirable. So those are the top six reasons <laughs> why your dog may be behaving badly, as I say with my air quotes, because to me, it's not that your dog is behaving badly at all. It's that we have failed them in some way and we need to step up. So make sure you are touching on all of these points with your dog. Make sure they're getting plenty of exercise. They're getting plenty of enrichment. Make sure that you're training with them and you are continuing to reinforce the behaviors you want to see throughout their lifetime. Make sure they don't have any underlying medical issues and work on socialization. And if you have a change of environment for your dog, make sure you are working with them to ease them into it. Make sure they are as comfortable as possible and that you are providing plenty of love and support in the transition. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end today's video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, if you haven't already, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed or following, make sure you are doing that too. All right, guys, give your dog or cat some extra love for me today. With that, I will see you in the next video.